Superhero movies are losing money. We all know it, and it's not a secret. But the real question is, why are they losing money? Is it as basic as fatigue within general audiences? Are the public images of these stars changing how these movies are being perceived? Or are these studios spending too much money on cutting corners to milk a dying genre? Well, I set out to solve the riddle, to figure out why these films are slowly dying, and what I discovered is it's actually a little bit of all three. Let me explain. To get a rough estimate, I decided to calculate the numbers on every superhero movie over the past five years, even theatrical animated releases because they popped off too. My equation to break down a film is in this format. A studio's box office cut plus DVD and Blu-ray sales minus marketing and production costs and that equals the profit for that specific movie for that company. Six studios released 37 movies in five years and each company had their fair share of wins and losses. And some of them are pretty surprising. A disclaimer before I start, like previously stated before, these numbers are rough estimates based on the numbers that I found online. Only these companies know what they truly spent and brought in. Twenty eighteen was a crazy year, cause everybody was popping off. Even Fox made funny money, so you know the world was rock hard for superheroes. Especially whenever Infinity War dropped, cause that shit was like Viagra to the genre. If you put out anything superhero in 2018, you were breaded. The fact this is the only year in this five year time frame where there were no flops says it all. So every financial investment each studio made was an intelligent one. Especially with Pixar with The Incredibles 2, cause they made a thick ass bag. <laughs> 2019 is where things begin to shift. Now, I'm not saying it was a bad year because, I mean, the biggest superhero movie ever came out that year. But ironically, the movie that would cause audiences to erupt in cheers and tears would be the same movie to release superhero fatigue throughout general audiences. I began to see the opinion online that Endgame was the perfect ending, so there's no need to watch the genre anymore because going forward, who could really top what they did? People even thought the MCU themselves couldn't do what they did previously, and so far, those predictions have been proven right. 2019 would see two flops. One for Lionsgate with Hellboy, and one for Fox with Dark Phoenix, and we all know why they flopped. You're garbage. Hi, 2020. If any year could be a butthole after 20 explosive diaries, it would be you. Not only did you shut down our lives, lock us in our homes, and cause mass panic throughout every nation, you also delivered the worst year ever in cinema history. Because four movies dropped this year, and all four flopped. But, as we all know, lockdown was in full effect causing economic peril, so I don't blame the studios this year for losing money. But for 2021, though, I'm putting it all on their ass. Yeah, listen, uh, we fucked up. 2021 was weird because everything slightly improved, but the effects of what just happened to the world were still being felt in every home and every industry. As studios dealt with shutdowns and strict guidelines, they decided to power through and release a lot more movies than the year prior. But these releases were terribly mismanaged. One big reason is how these companies decided to start releasing large budget films not only in cinemas, but also on streaming services on the same exact day. And that affected numbers tremendously. It also pissed off a lot of people involved with the creation of these movies, resulting in lawsuits and burn bridges between creators and studios. Yeah, the pandemic was tough on the film industry, but the majority of the blame goes to the ones in charge who made rash decisions hurting their long-term relationships with not only creators, but fans as well. Do you blame yourself? What? Well, it's quite common in this situation for a patient to feel a kind of guilt. 2022 was the first year after lockdown that these studios could not blame the pandemic for their decrease in box office numbers. This year was the real test to see if these films still had the power to bring in a real bag, and to be honest, it ain't looking so good, Chief. Six movies dropped this year and four flopped. And don't forget, at this point, not only were the three main studios drastically bleeding money, but Lionsgate and Universal had given up on releasing anything at all, and Fox was so damn bad they had to be absorbed by the entertainment overlord only known as Disney. To a few, the writing was on the wall for the genre. However, the depths of how far superhero films had fallen would become well known in the current year of our Lord, 2023. I could fix things. You could also destroy everything. Hey, you just touched my penis. Please don't do that. 
2022 and 2023 had brought these movies back down to reality. Gone are the days of 2018 where you could drop a turd and pull out a gold nugget. It's clear from a financial standpoint that you actually have to try now. If you want a superhero movie to turn a real profit, the quality of the movie needs to be the main priority. You can't drop a movie with an okay story starring a criminal and shitty CGI and be surprised when it loses money. Audiences aren't stupid and can't be swayed by pitiful marketing tactics to come fill your morally bankrupt pockets. Shit don't work like that. 2023 saw two films flop. Shazam 2 because nobody cares and The Flash because this dude is a trash can. But just because these movies ain't bringing in a billy no more doesn't mean they're gonna die. No, these movies still have potential for great profit. But if that's gonna happen, a few things need to change and a major problem needs to be addressed immediately before anything else is created. You know, my favorite thing about numbers is they don't lie. And these numbers expose a glaring issue within our current era of superhero movies. Utilizing the past five years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe's financials, we can see two things. Overall sales are down each year while the budget for these movies continue to remain the same. This is not only for the MCU, but for every studio who still releases these films today. Now you may ask, well what's causing these overblown budgets and what route can we take to fix them? And I asked myself the same question, and the answer I found is not surprising and kind of ironic. It took me just one Google search to understand the financial mistake that these companies are making, and that is the overuse of CGI. Yes, the technology of creating computer-generated images are not only holding these films back, but killing any chance of major profitability. CGI costs Marvel anywhere from $100 to $200 million for solo movies and around $350 million for Avengers movies. That's even before they pay for the cast, the crew, the production, the marketing, and the distribution. With the kind of money they're bringing in now, allocating that much for VFX isn't acceptable anymore. Now the real irony of it all is audiences don't like the overuse of CGI, and if people are growing a distaste for it, then relying so heavily on it and burning through more money just to use it is pure insanity. But there is a silver lining, a specific blueprint that has been proven to bring quality, massive profits, and satisfaction to a massive fan base, creating some of the most immortal, thought-provoking moments in cinema history, an innovative way of filmmaking made famous by the one and the only Without bringing up his ability to tell a unique story, amazing cinematography, sound design, and almost every other aspect of his movies, I think his mentality on practicality really makes a difference in how his films are perceived. The Joker capture scene hit so hard because everything you saw in front of you was real. It had weight to it. Like whenever Batman flips the Joker semi, every other sound is cut besides the destruction that came with that massive vehicle crashing back down into the earth. Stuff like that helps the audience connect to the moment because we feel like we're in that scene. But when everything on the screen is computer generated, it takes you out of the movie and kills the experience. Now I'm not saying get rid of CGI completely because the technology has come a long way and can do some incredible things. But using it sparingly on top of practical effects not only saves money, but creates better movies for a happier loyal fan base. That's why Nolan's example was one not only superhero movies should follow, but all cinema going forward. Now, an average budget for a Christopher Nolan movie is around $238 million. And those movies come with a return of around $306 million. That's an average profit of $69 million. A little side note, I was only able to find half of Nolan's DVD and Blu-ray sales, so I estimate this number is anywhere from $1 to $5 million more, which strengthens my point even further. Now, let's see the numbers for superhero movies with how they're made today. An average budget for a superhero movie is $319 million. And those movies bring in an average return of around $383 million. That's an average profit of $64 million. So in conclusion, shit that looks like this costs less than shit that looks like this. It has more of a chance of bringing in money on a consistent basis in higher quantities. So after all that, you tell me, what should these studios do?